your will come true If your mind is glued To the fact that life is so blue It's Sandy and an only here, and welcome to the Sandy and Friends podcast. Today, we're talking to Jim Meskimen. So, welcome. Uh, I, I'll talk, uh, hello, hello. I, I have to uh, confess uh, that uh, I'm, I'm actually not Jim Meskimen. He's nearby, but um, he's trying to put, I think he's got putting on his, his jumper or sweater, as you would call it. Anyway, <laughs> my name is Professor Nestor Jackdaws, and I'm a, an acquaintance of Mr. Meskimen's, and so. Uh, 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 hello. Yeah, hi, Professor N- Professor Nestor. Hi, hi there. Nice, it's- nice to meet you. You, you, you're, you're a very. Uh, you, are you sisters? You look. There's a family resemblance. Goodness, no! Oh my God. <laughs> oh dear. Well, struck a raw nerve there. Sorry. I have an elder brother, so I know exactly exactly how it feels. It's 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 you know it can be very off putting indeed. Well, I'm I'm an art historian, dears, and and I'm always talking about um, you know on my on my little vlogs and, and videos. I'm always talking about creativity, and I I, I glean I, I gather from you that you are also very interested in the creative arts. Are you talking to me or you know her? Well, I'm talking to, to either of you, actually. I, I think you, you probably both are. I can't tell. I don't know enough about you to say, you know, if, if you, but it seems like, you know, if you're, am I wrong? Am I, am I far afield? Uh, no, no, no. I am very creative. But did you know that she likes puppets? I mean, ugh. Oh, well, puppets, you know, puppets go back in the history of art quite far. I think mankind has been using puppets almost as long as he's been using fire. But, but it's creepy. <laughs> but, but, you know, certain sorts of, and I'm sure you can appreciate that certain sorts of stories and, 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 and little plays can't be done without puppets. Puppets are quite necessary. You know, they've been using puppets around the fire and in the caves back in the old, uh, uh, you know, the Neanderthal days. And, and, and even in ancient Egypt, I believe, they used puppets to, to tell stories. Oh, I'm, I'm just not into the whole thing. It's just, ugh. Well, you know, one, it's, if it's not to your taste, I certainly understand. It's not for everybody, is it? It's just, ugh, no. <laughs> well, well I, you know, I think I, I'm going to see if Jim Meskimen, the person you actually want to talk to, is, is free. I think he's just over here. I'm just going to make, Jim, yeah? That's if they want to talk to you, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. I'm just, uh, I'm putting on my sweater. So I'm just, uh, I'm just reading some emails. Well, it, it's a poor time to read emails. Because you're about to be interviewed, you know, so it's, it's important for you to sort of get things all together and then, you know, sort of maintain your responsibilities, you know, you made an appointment. I know, Professor, thank you so much. I don't need to hear a lecture from you. Right? I'm not lecturing you. I'm just simply telling you what I hear. I know. I get it. I get it. Thank you. That's fine. I appreciate it. Well, hi. Hi, y'all. <laughs> well, um, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Oh, God, the collar's tight. Ah, here we go. That's more relaxing. Hi there. And, and is that uh, Anna Lee? Anna Lynn, thank you. Anna Lynn. <laughs> Rhymes with lanolin. Yeah, I get it now. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, you, you uh, what, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you. So um, I had this whole idea set up that, you know, we'd just be uh, doing a- an interview here, but it turns out that this was much more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't come on right away. I was just having, to try and, having trouble. You ever have trouble getting into a sweater? I, I think the sleeves were turned inside out or something. It was just very, very challenging today. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right, Annalyn, do, do you want to wanna ask Jim some questions here? Uh, uh, if, if that's okay with him. Then, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Shoot. Right. Fire away. Everything's good. Your sweater's all right. All that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm all good now. So, um, this segue is very, very well. Um, how did your interest in comedy begin? <laughs> 
Well, I, 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 comedy, I'm, you know, comedy's fun. I, I like comedy movies and comedy shows and comedy books. And I like it when it, it makes you feel better and it's sort of ridiculous. And it's a, it's a grand old tradition and entertainment. And, you know, when you're, when you're a little kid, like I was once long ago, you, you're looking for reasons to laugh because life can be so serious and, uh, and laughter, it turns out is very good for people, it makes them feel better, it makes them healthier. And so I've always been attracted to comedy. I didn't know why, uh, but um, I just, I, I really like it. And I try to create it so that other people will feel good too. We are very grateful for that. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm your biggest fan, Jim. Keep that You're my biggest fan? Wow. Wow. It's so good to meet my biggest fan. <laughs> it's so fantastic to meet my hero. <laughs> well, this is really getting to be a party. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. So I'm, I'm interested in when it was that you began to actually begin your endeavors into comedy. Well, uh, professionally, you mean, I guess, like as a job? Is that what you mean? Or yes. just in general? Yeah. Well, when I was in my uh, early 20s, I started to study improv theater in New York City. And I did a lot of performing with a group of people and we had a lot of fun and it was almost always comedy. It was comedy songs and scenes and plays. And, and I did a lot of impressions, uh, celebrity impressions and, and things. And it was all designed to make audiences have a really good time. So, and then I just uh, I eventually started working in commercials, TV commercials and radio commercials and then films and television. So it was, uh, but it started off with me just performing with friends for really no pay, but just for the pleasure of hearing people laugh and, and meeting strangers and having them enjoy a good time. Oh, I love that. Oh, so, so when did you find an interest in specific, wow, okay, specifically celebrity that's, impressions? That's a tough word. Well, I, you know, I've always, been interested in celebrities and, and my favorite movie stars. When I was a little kid, I liked to watch movies like The Wizard of Oz and uh, and pretend I was the cowardly lion. <laughs> put them up, put them up. And, uh, and the, the great Wizard of Oz, uh, hey, go away, go away, he's not here. And those great characters and I, I just like to copy them and, and bring them out and surprise my friends with these voices. So I've really been all my life sort of practicing, probably like you've been practicing some of the things that you do uh, for my own pleasure. And then, you know, when I had the courage, I started to tell other people about it. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a part of me for a long, long time. Gosh, when did that start? Long, long time. I mean, really, when I was just a, a little kid. So, you know, I would watch a movie on TV and I would try to talk like that person. You know, children learn by copying a lot of the time. And I would look at a thing on TV and go, I wonder if I can talk like that. I wonder if I can say that word or that phrase. And uh, maybe I can make somebody laugh if I say that thing, you know? So it's just very natural. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. So, is there a then, lot? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was gonna say, and then um, later on when I was having to earn a living <laughs> and, and work and make money and so forth, I, uh, I found that I, since I've been practicing and playing on my own with voices, it wasn't a big leap to, uh, to work professionally. And to, once I started getting auditions and got scripts put in front of me, I could bring them to life with different characters and voices and, and people liked it. And so they would hire me to do different things. And that was very nice because I wanted to make a living at what I love. And I, I was able to do that pretty early on. Oh, wow. So that's so cool. So you were able to take that idea of developing these different voices and apply it to a character. It's pretty wild. Yeah. yeah, for animation and commercials and movies and TV shows. And yeah. So these days, I mostly do a lot of uh, 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 sounding like famous people, and they'll put it in a TV show, in, in maybe on a TV or some sort of scene, you know, sometimes they have another actor playing the famous person and I do the voice. That's happened many times. And that's funny because I get to go and then go to a studio and watch that other actor on, on a screen 
and try to match his lip movements as he sounds like President Bill Clinton or something like that. I have to sort of get right in there uh, in exactly the same time and say the words. Or uh, who else have I done uh, recently? I've done Richard Nixon, former President Richard Nixon, quite often. And uh, he's the same way. I try to match the tone. And uh, Johnny Carson as well, the great uh, talk show host. Johnny Carson, you probably don't remember him, but uh, uh, you're way too young. But uh, he also uh, sounded like this, and he's been used quite a lot in, uh, in TV shows. So it's, it's fun. And that is fun, especially for the audience. So yeah. uh, you said that you, uh, you worked in animation. What's that like? Well, animation is is really delightful, uh, you know, because you, you're generally doing something kind of, you know, a fun sort of script with adventure and a lot of action and comedy and stuff. And uh, the way that the best way to do it is when you've got a, a, a recording room full of actors who are all reading the scripts together and sort of playing off each other's voices because of the pandemic. There hasn't been so much of that, but I'm sure it'll come back again. And uh, the times that I've, I've had the most fun is being in a, a room, a uh, recording studio with five, six, seven, eight other actors. We're all going through the script, playing our part, acting it out and bringing emotion into it and making funny choices. And, and they record all of it. And, and then that's, I don't know if you realize, but that's the first part of production of an animated show is they write the script, then they record the voices before they do any drawing or any uh, computer animation or of any kind, because the, the uh, communication that's coming from the actors, those lines, those words are going to dictate where the character is going to be and how he's going to look and how his mouth is going to be. So that comes later. That is so cool. So yeah. uh, do, would you say that you prefer doing voices with animation or, um, do you like doing it when you're doing it in person or do you just like doing voices? I, I do like being in front of an audience. That's really fun. I haven't been able to be in front of one for quite a while, but uh, I, that's the best because you get to hear people laugh and you get to really share the experience with them at the same time. In animation, you never really hear the audience laugh or applaud or smile or anything. You're wherever you are and they are wherever they are. And it's sort of, uh, you know, spread out. But uh, so live live performing is really super fun. And most actors that you talk to, I think, would probably say the same thing. If they've been on stage, particularly if they're comedians, they really like to hear the audience response. And we appreciate that. I mean, being in front of you, oh, my goodness. You've got to get over it. You've got to get over it. I, I, I can't. I can't do this. I don't want you. <laughs> hang, hang in there. I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't Okay, why don't you ask the next, that, let's try that again. Why don't you ask the next question? All right, it's going through a me too. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try to speak now. All right, oh my goodness. Okay, go ahead. What is it that goes into each of the, the oh my God, oh my God. You both have the same, you both have the same disease. <laughs> it, it's I knew you were sisters. <laughs> What is it that goes into each of your impressions? There we go. So are you quickly able to adapt to a voice? It depends. It depends. I mean, I can't do, people say to me all the time, is there any voice you can't do? Which is a very nice thing to say. But most of the voices in the world I can't do. I specialize in the ones that I really like and that I can do. And what goes into it is that when I, uh, when I watch a movie or a TV show and there's a performer that I really like a lot, I listen to them. I can't help it. I'm just interested. And I like to, uh, I, you know, when you watch a movie, you feel like you are that actor. You're in the scene. You're, you're experiencing what they experience if it's a good movie and, uh, or a good story. And so I like to see how much of that character I can take on. And then I, uh, I see if I can actually sound like them. And I can sort of hear their voice in my mind. Oh. And most impressionists, I think, have a very good, uh, have very good memories that way. And if you can hear a voice in your mind, and if you also are very familiar with your own voice and, and how to make certain sounds. Like, I know I can go kind of deep like this and create this sort of sound. And I know that I can go way up here, too. 
and create this sort of frequency. And I know that I can go in between there, then I have a general idea of, of how I could make that voice, you know? And there's ways to change it, to add more air, for example. Or to just bounce it off of some other place inside your face so that it just sounds different. And I'm practiced enough to, to know how to do this really easily. Then if I hear a voice, I go, hmm, I kind of recognize where that would be in my face and how to create that sound and always oh, got a little bit of an accent. Well, I, I know how to do that accent. So that's not that difficult. Perhaps if he's from England or something, I say, well, where is he from in England? I kind of know this accent. Or if he's from Germany, I also can figure out how to make this sound. So then I, you know, all these little parts come together and it's sort of like a puzzle. It's fun. It sounds like it. <laughs> you know, Sandy does voices too. Not very I, good ones. I don't doubt it. I, I don't doubt it. Yeah, so she's probably good. You have a few, huh, Sandy? A few? I mean, she doesn't think so, but you know. <laughs> sisters, what are you going to do? We're not sisters. Stop. Okay, whatever you say. Whatever you say, Anna Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask the next question. All right. Ask the next question. What is your favorite part about doing an impression? My favorite part is when I have been working on one and experimenting, and then I listen to it after I record it and I go, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. I had a job recently for a movie and I was trying to duplicate uh, one of the presidents for this film. It's actually, it's a TV show. And, uh, and we were trying and trying and they would play it back. And the, the producers were like, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. And they were happy. But I was like, I'm still trying to solve this. So I asked them to do it one more time and I made an adjustment and then I went, ah, okay. And when they played it back, I went, that's, that's pretty good. So, so I was more pleased maybe than they were, but uh, I think in the end, the illusion was more complete. So when I really sort of solve it, you know, and it, and it convinces me that, okay, there's enough similarity because you never get exactly, exactly alike. You can't do a complete, total, perfect impression. It is impossible really but you can come pretty close. And when I realize I've come as close as I can come, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like when a golfer hits a hole in one. <laughs> are, are you sure that you can't do an exact impression? Because I mean, if that's true, then you come pretty darn close. <laughs> well, thanks, but you know, it, everybody's so different. And uh, our, the mechanics and our genetics and all are so very different that it's, it's pretty hard. Like if you took a recording of, somebody that I do like Robert De Niro or Tommy Lee Jones or Robin Williams or something. And you put my recording right next to his and listen to them. You go, okay, that's the real one. And you'd, you'd figure it out, even though I'm really good at it. And because there's just an indefinable sort of quality about them that makes them unique. We're all very unique people. Even, even you, Anna Lynn. Oh my goodness. You called me unique. Calm down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And Jim, one day if I become famous, will you do an impression of me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I'd be honored. Thank you. I don't, I don't think it would be in my top 10, but I would definitely do it. Oh, I think it would be fantastic. <laughs> How would you feel if somebody imitated you? Because I, I think that I don't like to do impressions of the people to the people because I think it makes them feel a little bit weird. Oh, I would be so happy. What are you kidding? I mean, what, it's from you. Oh. I might need to suck a helium balloon to really bring it off. <laughs> nice. Wow, she's just uh, flipping all over the place with her emotions. Oh, she's, she's <laughs> got that. All right, you, you want to ask the next question? Yes, I do. Okay, Jim, could you tell us about your upcoming projects? Yes, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm working on a TV show now. Um, I can't say too much about it, but it's uh, called The Big Door Prize, and it's a comedy. And uh, do, you, do you know Chris O'Dowd, the Irish actor Chris O'Dowd? He's, he was, <laughs> I will after this interview. <laughs> yeah, look him up. I'm sure you've seen him before. He's really charming and, and wonderful 
comic actor and uh, he's in it and a lot of other really talented people. And uh, you'll see me maybe in, uh, if you watch it, there's a show about Watergate called Gaslit. I don't, I don't know if it's really going to be your cup of tea or not, but I'm in that. And um, also an episode of American Auto. That's a new show, I think, on NBC. Um, and I, I play a, a, an automobile executive. And, and then I do the Colonel Sanders. Uh, if you listen to the radio, I do a Colonel Sanders voice for the radio commercials for KFC. So uh, that, that, that hopefully will continue uh, through the coming year. That is so much fun. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So where can people follow you, Jim? Well, they can go to Instagram, and I'm at at Jim Pressions. That's Impressions with a J, Jim Pressions. And also on YouTube at Jim, uh, yeah, Jim Pressions. I guess there's no at on YouTube. It's just Jim Pressions. And I do a, a daily videos at least one, sometimes two. And the, the daily ones that I do are fun and they're very short. I, uh, I have a wheel with uh, celebrity names on it and I spin it and then I take a fortune cookie out of a bowl and I read the fortune cookie fortune in the style of the celebrity that the wheel has landed on. It's called celebrity fortune cookie for that reason. And uh, I do that every day. So every day you, you can get a fortune and hear, hear it read by, oh gosh, Lots of different celebrities. Oh, I, I love those, Jim. Oh, my goodness. Everybody so better go watch them. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they're even fortunes. You know, fortune cookie fortunes are generally not fortunes at all. They're like little jokes or, or observations. But, but every now and then it's a real fortune. And then I think it has a good chance of coming true. Well, I, I certainly hope so. I've gotten a few of those, you know. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah, I, I, like today, the fortune I got was you will meet a beautiful blonde stranger. And look, there's no one stranger than you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sitting here waiting to talk and you're laughing. All right. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I, I can't even begin to describe how happy that comment just made me. Thanks! <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. Really? <laughs> you just made my decade. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I've enjoyed talking to you too. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming on here and talking to both of us. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun and it's been an absolute honor. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Annalyn. Bye. Beyond the clouds and the rain, a place where sadness drains, where the sun peers over your sadness and your pain. There is no gravity yet within this cavity. You make your own truth. Your dreams will come true if your mind isn't glued to the fact that life is so blue. Your dreams cannot stay if you don't repay yourself for making it through the path to making your dreams come true